Uh, let's move on, shall we? Whitehall civil servants took, get this, more than 770,000 days of sick leave last year because they were stressed and had other mental health problems. I mean, this figure is 38% higher, Alex Dean, yeah. uh, than it was last uh, year. And the Labour Party says that that differential demonstrates a mental health crisis at the heart of Whitehall. Well, that's one interpretation. Um, there is uh, a, another one. We, and I, if I think about the rates of stress in, say, our armed forces or the fire service, which I think, with no offence to civil servants, are unambiguously more stressful uh, roles um, than uh, the civil service, uh, which are far lower uh, than this, and certainly have seen no such uh, increase. You may um, wonder at the increase in um, sickness and mental health coming at just the time people were expect being expected to come back to work after the work from home uh, uh, time during coronavirus. Your fellow presenter, Jacob rees took an awful lot of stick for suggesting that civil servants were reluctant to put in a, a day's work for a day's pay in the post-coronavirus uh, environment. Did he take a picture of the empty uh, desk? took a picture of an, 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 an empty uh, office. Um, I dare say there will be many people looking at these statistics and saying, you may have had a point. Do you think he's got a point, Michael? I struggle with this because it, it seems like you can't turn on the news without there being some famous person saying it's really important to take mental health seriously. So you, you see Prince William having this sort of Zoom conversation with someone saying we should all be open about mental health. Now, for me, it's good to be open about mental health. More important is actually we give people the material capacity to have good mental health. Now, for me, if lots of people are taking days off because of mental health problems. Now, again, we don't know if this is someone sort of calling in on Thursday and saying, I'm a bit down today, so I'm not going to come in. Or if this is people who are on long-term sickness because they've been driven into a depression, which lots of people are, by the way. It's not rare at all. Um, so I, I think we're coming at this the wrong way around. I think we should say, look, if this many people are taking sick days off because of mental health, do we really think there's been a 38% increase in sort of people's laziness? I think that seems pretty implausible to me. So to me, it seems much more likely that you've got people who are under much more undue stress than they were in the past. Now, that might have a lot to do with the cost of living crisis. Do you think it might have anything to do with um, having a policy where you get six months of full pay, sick pay? I don't know the precise um, that, that is their labour policy. terms that the civil service That is their have. policy. So if you were appointed prior to 28th of April 2004, you get occupational six pay of six months full pay and then six months half pay up to a maximum of 12 months sick pay in a rolling four-year period. Just to make sure, it's, it's off topic but relevant. Uh, you, you've, you've cited a comparison with somebody who was working in 2004. Our discussion before the break about junior doctors and their comparison with their, their What's wages. 2004? You said if you started working before 2004. No, 2014. So if you were appointed prior to 2014, oh, I, I, then me. that's your you policy. That, if, you was, yeah, if you was entitled anyway. after that, during your first year of service, you get a month full pay and a month half. The second year, two months full pay. Third year, three months full, full pay and so on and so forth. Sure. Point, point what I was going to make was you don't have to go back that long to remember that our junior doctors were being beasted. Um, it was one of the reasons we opted out of the Working Time Directive when we were members of the uh, European Union. They were, then were working really hard. And if I were a doctor or indeed a civil servant, I wouldn't want to hark back to that kind of uh, working condition and say, I want my pay to be uplifted back to what it was back then, because they were working far more hours for, for pay than they are now. Yeah, see, I take um, depression and things like that seriously. I really do. Um, but in business, I also had to manage someone. One of my direct employees um, said that she had depression. And as a manager, I found it really challenging because she just wouldn't come in to work, just, just wouldn't come in, wouldn't call, say that she wasn't coming in, just wouldn't turn up. And then a few days later, she would reemerge and go, right, OK, yeah, I feel better now. And I really struggled with how you manage that because you've got workloads, you've got uh, objectives, you've got outcomes and all the rest of it. So it's kind of... I don't know, as a manager, as a, a leader of a team, etc., it's a very tricky thing to manage. And it's also, on the flip side, a very tricky thing to prove because you can go to a doctor, fill in a questionnaire uh, about how overwhelmed and anxious you feel or whatever, and there, boom, that's your sick note. Yeah, I mean, it is difficult to prove, but I think, again, we can come at this from, from, from the other end. Now, now one, one, one way we can deal with this is to say, everyone, you know, stiff up a lip. If you're feeling down, just come into work anyway. Now, potentially that would bring some people back to work. It might also have some downsides because actually I think telling people, you know, don't pay attention to your mental health needs is probably not without negative consequences. The other way we can look at this is currently our country deals with mental health problems appallingly. So if you, Does I mean, I, I know that you've 
talked about this before, I don't want to speak to your experiences, but friends of mine who have suffered from deep depressions, which I don't need you know, proof that they are deep depressions, yeah. when they try and get help from the NHS, you get put on the longest possible waiting list to see any kind of counsellor. So the idea that we are sort of giving people the support they need to feel well enough to go to work, I feel like that would probably be the low-hanging fruit we should try and do before we start telling people that, oh, you can't have paid sick leave if, you, if, if you're coming down with a depression. I don't think this country um, treats mental health uh, issues appallingly. Well, I think... neither do I, not least because it turns out in the civil service, what you've got to do is say a few magic words and you can bunk off for some time with cost-free. But that's not a good way of dealing with mental health. So a good way of dealing with mental health is you have access to counsellors in a short space of time, right? That's not the case under the NHS. You have to wait a very long time, then you get about 10 sessions, then you get kicked off. I think if we were a society that dealt properly with mental health, then you'd have those waiting as no, being more much rigorous. shorter. Yeah, more rigorously. I don't think saying, no, if you no, feel no, sick, no, have a day off work. That's, that's not a society no. that's particularly serious about it's mental health. a reasonable health. point. Yeah, and I do think also for some mental health issues, you know, the worst thing you can do is stay in bed. One of the best things you can do is get up, get showered, get out the door uh, and busy and distract your mind in some cases. Anyway, I'm sure you won't be backwards and coming forwards and telling me what you think.